we got a company bull received a company bulletin just as any all these companies send out usually a monthly uh, newsletter or something I got one from RCA headquarters and it said that they had one of their experimenters had an object he was flying around that had an anti-gravity drive in other words it was self-levitating and could be moved around and I thought well why are we doing this why are we messing with all these rockets when we could do this so I called up headquarters and first they said well it's not true it, it, the experiment didn't really work and then they said the document didn't even exist and I said well I got it right in my hands here and I already knew that Noah Tesla had flown a platform around in the very early 1900s like 1904 I don't believe that we've gone backwards in technology and the Russians grabbed everything they could of that technology and I assume that our government grabbed some of it or all of it. Yeah, I mean, if you can levitate an iceberg, you could end a drought. I mean, you could land in a dry lake bed. You could change <laughs> architecture. The work that Hutchings has been doing, mm -hmm. he has Tesla coils, he has Van de Graaff, and he has, mm -hmm. very frankly, static electricity generators. Mm -hmm. Notice that data doesn't have to make sense. Right. Data just has to be truthful. Yeah, the, the truth. That's right. It's more important than proving Einstein right or wrong. Okay, now, now, now his, his data showed everything from a, a chocolate milkshake snaking toward the top of his room mm -hmm. uh, to bowling balls floating in the air. Mm -hmm. Very little effort required, about as much as lifting an umbrella and no centrifugal force. Now, of course, we have the problem of stopping it. Nikola Tesla was a great inventor and uh, a great, great humanitarian. Well, Tesla wanted to get into his field, which was free, if you will, energy that comes from the surroundings. He was hired by um, J.P. Morgan to work with S uh, Westinghouse and Edison companies and, and in the East Coast. And Tesla said, I've, I've got it made. I think we can now transmit electrical power through the earth, through the ionosphere, without any wires or, or telephone poles. If you gave a device, like a free energy device, a generator that would, would uh, service all their needs in their home for free, they could then bring out their creative talents, which they were born with and been suppressed because they've had to toil for a living. They could be tremendous artists beyond beyond our dreams, tremendous engineers beyond our dreams. J.P. Morgan was not buying it. He said, no, we're going to have to tear this stuff down. So Tesla kind of pulled back into himself and decided, you know, well, I guess it's not time for this. He took a whole bunch of these bug wings and he glued them to like a Venetia blind structure and he put it into, into a little platform he built. So they, they were all it, these bug wings were all covered in here. And he used the, uh, I theorize he used the wing covers as well as the inner wing itself. There's also a kind of a handlebar on this thing uh, with some controls. You can see a thing a little better here in detail. Uh, the controls, I think, had to be manipulated continuously and probably vibrated to create the same action that the bug was doing. There was also down at the base some kind of a lever, which I suspect controlled the amount of uh, lift he was getting out of this thing. Anyway, Grabenikov claimed that he could fly this thing or levitate it and it would go around at a thousand, almost a thousand miles an hour. Now you ask, how can that happen? You know, well, he said that there, there was an energy field that built up around this thing due to this uh, gravity field building up in the platform and by uh, this thing building up, it built out a force field that basically surrounded him and protected him from the local environment. So even though he was flying at a thousand miles an hour, uh, you could go, uh, you know, you could be wearing your Sunday best suit and not get it flutter a bit at a thousand miles an hour. But if you get into the other things that he did with uh, shape, they almost mirror the stuff that I discovered. And it, it proves, I guess, that you know, there's either two crazy people in the world or there's two people that have found the same discoveries. Has anybody ever threatened your life? I mean, mm. as far as like trying to possess what you have here, I mean, seeing it as a threat, has anyone ever like, you know, threatened you and said that you know, you're onto something and you're not allowed to be doing this? And 
Mm, no major threats. Um, mostly people saying, well, you should work for the U.S. government. That's um, a lot of emails I get are like that and that they're ready and willing to stand by and give the funding out. Einstein's work is only a slight modification of Newton's work. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but we, we, we do understand that uh, Newton's work has, well, Newton's work, for example, Newton says... Uh, this is uh, my one. Says, it says, anything that's in motion tends to remain in motion, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay, so I have something, and I'm taking it, I'm taking it around counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And see, it, and, and what Newton said is true. He just wants to go around and around and around and around, around. This particular thing is called a cell. It is not, it's clear plastic, there's nothing in it. Okay, now I'm going to take it around clockwise. It says, no, I don't want to do that. It's just like my children. I will do it my own way. How did I go the other way? Precisely. A Newton's law. Is that because of the rotation of the planet, or? Well, there's there. Can I try a, that? You may. In fact, first so of all, send around counterclockwise. Okay. Counterclockwise. This is called this is called a cell. It is celt, C E L T. What's in it? Okay, okay, there we go. Nothing's in it. Plastic. Okay, now take it around clockwise. Okay. And it says no. I and it goes back to the same number of turns you sent. Oh, well, I've never seen now anything go, like now that. Go, now go out stronger. I know. See, I'm looking for the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to. If you can use language, you really need to convert it into mathematics. But if here's here's one thing. I, if, this makes sense to me. If you can cancel out gravity in a falling body, and you can even reduce a percentage of the effects of gravity for aircraft, it would take less fuel, they would be more oh, efficient, yeah. and they could hover with less energy and and that much I can figure out. And the edge, atmospheric edge of the Earth will be meaningless. I think the realm of it is quite probable yeah. since I was studying some of the older experiments done by T. Brown, hmm. Poddle Enough and those folks. And what's interesting about Poggle enough is that uh, the uh, anti-gravity effects seem to go right down the earth all the way up to an unknown area. Tesla said they're, they're not interested in my, my time. I want you to take everything I can teach you and go in your time and see if they'll listen to you. And if you don't make it, you're going to have to pass it on because at the rate we're going, we're on a self-destructive course. Carr said, I will, I will, and he's, he got his own lab started and, and started uh, uh, really getting into a lot of free energy devices and building them. So he built a spaceship? Mm -hmm. He's building small spaceships then. And uh, he had different sizes, different models. There's a company, uh, Dance Kinetics, in Costa Mesa. That's where we were living, in Costa Mesa, California. And they're looking for a research and development laboratory technician. They gave me a job, they put me in the research lab, and I was inventing ideas all day long. I just loved it because I, I like to invent simple ways of doing hard things. We could talk about things that were unlimited, not limited. I said, my mission is to see that we have habitation and transportation in, in one vehicle. And he said, well, you, you sound like a guy that's back east getting in trouble right now. His name is Otis Carr. And he put in a patent for a levitation device, and they, they wouldn't give him the patent. They had to, he said, you've got to pull that levitation out and anchor it on the ground and we'll give you a patent on an amusement device. You cannot use levitation. Day and night, 24 seven, we were building these small prototypes and they would range anywhere from uh, 12 inches to three feet to six feet, to, you know, in, in size. And they actually flew, they actually levitated. Oh yeah. Oh, what sure. was the source of the power? Well, it was magnetic in nature. And, uh, and you were actually easier. building these for people to sit in. I mean, not just models. These were, these were prototypes just to prove uh, what we wanted and then graduate up to where human habitation could, could get on board and, and, and operate. In those days, yeah. we had counter-rotating wheels, one going clockwise and another going counterclockwise. We had a capacitor. We had small magnets. And um, we had what's called a utron. It was a double tetrahedron. That's two ice cream cones put with the open ends together. But you have a diamond shape. And we had 12 of them around the periphery of the craft. And we had magnets, horseshoe magnets, 12 of those around the craft. So when you started rotating and counter-rotating, the, as these 
utrons went through the field, they would act as, as a generator and a capacitor in, in themselves, and they would generate a lot of power, not necessary electrical power, but vibrational power. When you get to the resonant frequency of your surroundings, uh, it cancels everything out. It goes to a zero point. And once you've reached zero point, then you can go anywhere you want. So I uh, wondered if gravity could be uh, related to its cousin magnetism. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I found that when I take two magnets together, I have some neodymiums around here that I'm actually afraid of. They, They're they so can, strong. They can, they can danger you. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, you take a magnet, you go to put them together and go, and they go clunk, right? Mm -hmm. But you take one of them, move it around, and all of a sudden it doesn't want to yeah, go right. together. Yeah, right, the repulsive. So I got, uh, I had, I ordered one at five thousand dollars a piece, wow. with 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 a quarter inch hole through between both of them, and I put a brass bolt and I tightened them down, forcing them together, mm -hmm. and then I put them together in a thing that looks kind of like a rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I got another one that didn't have magnets in it. I got uh, nine guys that were not educated and didn't have pre didn't have uh, pre opinions on anything mm. and i dropped my two rocks mm -hmm. and, and i said what i would like you to do is i told them what i'd like you to do is i would like you to take whichever one arrives first get it in your hand and when i come down the elevator hand it to me mm -hmm. now they looked identical except for so uh, and nobody went, knew what was inside not, of absolutely not which one arrived first? The, the, one, the one that had no magnetic field in it. So you were able to cancel out gravity to a certain degree. You were you able like to that? cancel, Precisely. reduce the mass gravity effect. Precisely. Nature never uses English. It doesn't speak. It doesn't speak any language. But yet it's talking to us all the time. Right. And the key thing is, is to identify, identify what it's saying.